in this video I'm going to show you how to get the trending stocks on Twitter like just in case if you want to like find new stocks to invest or trade in and yeah it's going to be a simple python script and so what you want to do is create an app I already have one created once you create it um there should be a keys and tokens. I'm not going to show you mine, but there should be a access API key, a secret access API key, and then like a token and a secret token. And then uh, once you get all four of those, you're going to want to also install Tweepy. And um, to do that, you just do pip install Tweepy. And I already have it, but yeah, you just want to do that. And once you have all that set up, you can go to your uh, the project folder, have a, your main pi file set up. And we're going to start off and import Tweepy. From there, uh, this is straight from the documentation. Uh, it's just your API key goes here, your API secret key goes here, and then your access token goes here, and your access secret token goes here, and then by making a function called gather tweets, and in this function we're going to just basically be gathering all the tweets from whoever we follow. So we're going to set um, friends equal to API dot friends under friends underscore IDs. And this basically just gives us the IDs of all our friends. And then we're going to iterate through each friend that we have. And for each friend, we're gonna for each friend we're gonna gather all their tweets by doing apm user timeline, and inside we gotta put in the parameters, which is a username and. To do that, we're just going to basically do get user friend dot screen name, and then we're going to fill out there. We're gonna fill out some other stuff. Count twenty pages to look through. Five. Five. And then make sure to set tweet mode set to extended or sometimes the tweets will be cut off. Tended, okay. And why is this? And then we can see all the parameters inside the documentation as well. Go back to this. Now that we have all our tweets, we're going to make sure all the tweets are um, the same so they look neat for later. We're going to set the text to uppercase, uppercase, we're going to set it for every tweet in new tweets. So we're basically here, we're just setting every single tweet. We're going to make it uppercase, and then we're going to put all the uppercase tweets and append it to all. And then return all. And then we can
can just do, let's just print it out and see what we have. We're gonna go to here and then we're gonna run it by typing in python main.py and invalid syntax. Dun, 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 dun. And that's because we forgot a parenthesis. And then let's try again. New tweet. This forgotten S. Da, 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 da. And there you go, all our tweets. So next we're gonna make another function called split tweets because I wanna split up the tweets into words so I can check each word. So we're gonna have a variable called all tweets, set it equal to gather tweet. And then we're gonna have an empty array. And then we're gonna have a for loop called tweets and all tweets and then another for loop so nested for loop called tweet in tweet in tweets and the reason for this nested for loop is because if you look in here each person has an array of all their tweets and Inside each person's array, yeah, there's another, there's an array of all their tweets. So basically we want to dissect it by checking each person and for each person we want to check each tweet. So that's basically what this does. And then we're basically just going to split the tweets and we're going to Take each tweet and split it whenever there's a space. And then we're going to append it to our array split tweets. And then we're going to return split array. And then let's see if that worked. Split tweets, let's run it. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah, everything's split up. And yeah, you can see now we got a filter out the ticker symbols and it's not well I mean you can see that each ticker symbol a dollar sign precedes it as in like here here but sometimes there's like this ten fifty three dollar that's obviously not a stock symbol so we're going to have to do some filtering. So we're going to have a new function called sort ticker. Sort ticker. After we set that, we're doing setting tickers, which is an empty array, and then a for loop sentence in sort list. And it's going to be a nested for loop, word in sentence, because um, basically if you look through here, uh, there's basically a giant array of arrays that are nested. So the first for loop we go into here, 
and then in the second for loop we check each word inside this array and then so on so we'll be able to check every single word and then now we're gonna have an if statement to check if the word is what we are looking for which is a ticker symbol and we're gonna do that by saying if the word starts with a dollar sign that's gonna be a ticker symbol but then you saw how there's like the ten dollars the three dollars that are obviously not stocks so we're gonna have to make an and the word and then we're gonna type in this which basically um, this basically just checks that if the 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 oops if the characters following after the dollar sign to the length of the word so everything after the dollar sign we're gonna have to check that it's um not a number by saying is alpha because I'm pretty sure ticker symbols don't have numbers in them and we're gonna add a one last filter a statement condition or whatever where the length of the word has to be under six because I'm pretty sure ticker symbols aren't that long and then after that we're gonna just if it meets those conditions we're just gonna append the word two tickers because it should be a it should be a ticker symbol if it meets those conditions and then we're gonna just return tickers ticker all right and then let's check that out by saying sort ticker so it should just be a bunch of ticker symbols now is I spelt it wrong. Alpha. And it looks like it worked. It looks pretty filtered. We got, I'm pretty sure all these are ticker symbols. And yeah, so now all we gotta do is count them up and see which one is trending. And we're going to do that by doing one last function. Call it, let's call it organize trending. And then we're going to set tickers equal to sort ticker. And then data. And this is where the library we added way back comes in handy. The counter function. And we can just throw in data as an input, or tickers as an input, which has all our tickers, and then just tell it to do the most common tickers, and twenty, the top 25 most common tickers it'll find. And we're just going to return data. And you're going to see what this function does I mean you can make your own function to like sort and count out what's trending but I just think this way is easier so we're gonna do organize trending and then we're gonna run it run the script And then as you can see, it returns this beautiful data, which is, contains tuples of stock data, which gives you the ticker symbol, how many times it's mentioned, and yeah, that's about it.